This is 10,000 cubes on screen. It's nothing special with today's hardware, but without instancing, rendering this many objects starts to become taxing. This is 100,000 cubes. With this many cubes, you will absolutely have to use instancing. Instance rendering is when the GPU is called to render a single object many times over in a single draw call. This is half a million cubes. Though it may look impressive, today's graphics cards should easily be able to render this much. However, given the vast amount of transform data, some instancing systems will have very poor performance with this many objects. With hundreds of thousands of transforms, instancing must all be handled by the GPU without any CPU involvement. But what if the CPU side was just better optimized? What would happen if we rendered this on the CPU? It may be surprising to hear, but all of the footage you just saw was rendered on the CPU. This is our CPU software rasterizer. These two triangles on screen are being drawn in our code on the CPU. Normally triangles are drawn in hardware. This means software developers cannot change how that triangle is actually drawn. Software rendering, such as our engine, is nothing new. However, very little research has gone into it since the early 2000s with the rise of GPUs, and we think hardware rendering has fallen behind. We've been researching this for some time now, and this CPU engine is just the beginning. We have already done some tests with our methods running on the GPU, and we believe it may be possible to render billions of polygons on high-end GPUs. But for now, we want to show you what's possible on the CPU. You can see in the footage that the CPU is capable of handling physically-based rendering per pixel lighting. We even wrote a simple terrain engine, which is included in the open source project. The engine can handle millions of polygons on screen. However, it starts to struggle going above 1080p resolution. Part of the reason for this is we did not have time to fully optimize the pixel-based lighting system. We do not plan to use the CPU engine for any of our future projects, so we decided to make it open source. We had one question though. Can a CPU render a large battle? Well, I can certainly say our expectations were blown out of the water. A huge advantage this engine has is there are no such thing as draw calls. Every single polygon is rendered in one pass. The characters on screen are vertex animated meshes. This means their animation clips are made of multiple meshes that make up the keyframes. This is very similar to the animation system in our previous title, Ultimate Epic Battle Simulator 1. Normally with this type of animation system, the characters cannot be instanced due to so many meshes being involved. But that's not a problem for our CPU engine. Let's scale things up. This is 10,000 characters being rendered on a CPU in full 1080p with physically based shading. Even though a CPU only has a small fraction the power of a GPU, we are still getting somewhat comparable performance to UEBS-1 on a GPU. Keep in mind, the CPU is having to do everything here. That includes AI for the 10,000 individuals, animation handling, and LODs. This is the same battle running in 720p instead of 1080p. We can see the frame rate is roughly an average of 60 FPS. Everything you see in this video is included in the open source project, including the simple crowd tech you see in this battle. One interesting demo that's included is a simple grass rendering system. We're also including a custom terrain rendering system, which turns a Unity terrain into hundreds of meshlets with LODs. We hope you enjoyed the video. We can't wait to see what you do with the source code. 